What if the land beneath your feet wasn't still at all? What if the continent you call home was sliding inch by inch toward a collision course with another landmass? It sounds like the setup for a science fiction story, but it is happening right now. Australia, a continent often thought of as an isolated island adrift in its own corner of the southern hemisphere, is not standing still. It is charging northward at one of the fastest rates of continental drift on the planet, hurtling toward Asia in a geological race that will transform not just coastlines, but the very shape of the world. The question is not whether it will collide, it is only a matter of when and what kind of world-shattering consequences will follow. At first glance, it is easy to dismiss this as irrelevant. Six or seven centimeters per year hardly feels like much. After all, it is slower than the growth of your fingernails. But in the language of geology, where millions of years unfold like chapters in a vast book, such movement is extraordinary. This creeping pace is enough to redraw oceans, to crumble islands into mountains, to create earthquakes capable of toppling cities, and to summon volcanoes from the depths of the earth. In fact, the signs of this collision are already here. Papua New Guinea and Indonesia lie on the front lines, where Australia's advancing edge is colliding with other tectonic plates producing violence on a scale that humans have only begun to grasp. And yet, this is only the beginning of the story. The continent of Australia rides atop the Indo-Australian plate, a massive slab of Earth's lithosphere propelled by currents deep within the mantle. Think of it as a slow-moving conveyor belt, driven by the restless heat of the planet itself. On one end, new seafloor is created at mid-ocean ridges, pushing the plate forward. On the other end, parts of the plate are dragged downward into the mantle at subduction zones, pulling the rest of the plate along. Australia is caught between these two forces, and the result is an unstoppable northward sprint. Scientists tracking the movement of the plate through high-precision satellite data have discovered that the drift is so relentless that GPS coordinates across the continent need to be recalibrated every few years. Without correction, the systems we rely on, whether it's smartphones giving directions, surveyors measuring land, or even automated vehicles navigating roads, would all be thrown off. A continent shifting beneath its own people. That's the hidden reminder that the Earth is never still. But where Australia is headed makes this story more dramatic. Its target is one of the most geologically explosive regions on the planet a patchwork of colliding plates and microplates stretching across Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and the Philippines. It is a jigsaw puzzle in constant motion, a place where the Earth is perpetually breaking and rebuilding itself. Here, the Indo-Australian plate pushes against the Eurasian plate, collides with the Pacific plate, and tangles with smaller fragments of crust caught in between. Every interaction produces friction, uplift, and destruction. Already, the results are staggering. Papua New Guinea's towering Owen Stanley Range, for instance, is a product of this collision. What once lay as seafloor and scattered islands has been thrust upward into mountains rivaling the Alps, proof that Australia is literally bulldozing into its neighbors. The ground here quakes often, some tremors powerful enough to measure over magnitude 7. Entire villages cling to slopes that are still rising, still reshaping even as they are shaken by the collisions below. Indonesia, too, is locked in this tectonic struggle. Along its western flank runs the Sunda Trench, one of the most dangerous subduction zones on Earth. Here, the Indo-Australian plate plunges beneath the Eurasian plate, sinking into the mantle and dragging the crust above it into violent spasms. The trench reaches depths greater than seven kilometers, a scar in the ocean where some of the largest earthquakes in history have been born. In 2004, one such quake near Sumatra triggered a tsunami that killed over 230,000 people across the Indian Ocean. That disaster, though felt thousands of kilometers away, was intimately tied to the same forces driving Australia northward. The further east you travel, the stranger the geology becomes. In the Banda Sea region, instead of one clean subduction, the Australian plate's leading edge is twisted, folded, and shoved beneath smaller fragments of crust. The result is chaos, chains of volcanic islands, 
deep underwater trenches and some of the most convoluted fault systems ever mapped. Here, Earth's crust resembles shattered glass, each shard grinding against the others under Australia's relentless push. This chaos has consequences. Every time the crust slips, an earthquake is born. Every time rock melts in the depths of a subduction zone, magma rises to the surface, fueling volcanoes that dot the Indonesian and Melanesian islands. Every time the seafloor is wrenched or thrust upward, vast volumes of water are displaced, birthing tsunamis that can travel across entire oceans. The northern coast of Australia, including cities like Darwin, lives under this shadow. A powerful quake along the Banda Arc or Sunda Trench could send a wall of water racing toward its shores, leaving devastation in its wake. To understand where this journey leads, you must also understand where it began. Australia has not always been drifting northward. Over a hundred million years ago, it was bound together with Antarctica, South America, Africa, and India in the supercontinent known as Gondwana. For tens of millions of years, the southern supercontinent sprawled across high latitudes, hosting vast ice sheets, forests, and strange early animals. But Gondwana was never meant to last. Slowly, like a puzzle unraveling, its places to not, pieces began to drift apart. Around 45 million years ago, Australia finally tore away from Antarctica, beginning its long voyage north. That separation changed everything. Once free of the polar regions, Australia began to warm, shifting from icy landscapes to the arid deserts and bushlands that define it today. Its isolation allowed its flora and fauna to evolve in near-complete seclusion. Marsupials like kangaroos and koalas thrived, while placental mammals were absent. The platypus, with its bizarre mix of traits, survived only here. This uniqueness is a biological treasure, but it is also temporary. Australia's isolation will not last forever. Its collision with Asia will end the experiment of an isolated continent, blending its ecosystems with those of the North. Looking into the future means looking millions of years ahead, and the forecasts are anything but quiet. Geologists predict that as Australia slams into Southeast Asia, seas such as the Arafura and Timor will vanish. The waters that now separate Darwin from Jakarta will be replaced by land, mountains, and high plateaus. The once scattered islands of Indonesia will be welded to the mainland, and Northern Australia itself may buckle upward into towering ranges. Picture the Himalayas, born from the collision of India with Asia 50 million years ago. Now imagine a similar drama unfolding on the doorstep of Australia. But mountains and new landscapes are only part of the story. The collision will also reshape the oceans. Today, the Indonesian through flow acts as a vital current, linking the Pacific and Indian oceans. It helps regulate climate patterns across Asia and Australia, influencing monsoons, rainfall, and even global temperatures. When the seas close and land replaces water, this current will vanish, and with it, the delicate balance of climates we rely upon. Monsoon cycles may falter, rainfall patterns may shift, entire ecosystems and the societies that depend on them could be thrown into upheaval. The collision between Australia and Asia is not just an isolated event. It is part of a vast planetary rhythm that has played out for billions of years. Every few hundred million years, Earth gathers its continents together into supercontinents, only to tear them apart again. Pangaea, Rodinia, Nuna, each left scars on the Earth's crust that geologists can still trace. And long before them, still other supercontinents assembled and dissolved, in cycles that shape not only the geography of the planet, but the very evolution of life. Australia's northward drift is a step in this ancient choreography. If you project its motion tens of millions of years into the future, you see the pieces beginning to lock together. Northern Australia will rise, Indonesia will be fused to its shores, and Southeast Asia will become the anchor point for a growing continental mass. Farther down the line, some scientists propose, the Americas may also creep closer circling the Pacific and joining with Asia. Eventually, the scattered lands of today will gather into a new supercontinent, which geologists have named Amasia. In this vision of the far future, Amasia sprawls across the Northern Hemisphere, the Pacific Ocean, 
slowly closing as its crust sinks into trenches, disappears. What we know as the Indian Ocean contracts, as continents squeeze together. Instead of familiar seas, there will be vast mountain belts, deserts stretching thousands of kilometers, and climates so altered they would be unrecognizable to us. And at the heart of this gathering will lie Australia, no longer a lonely island continent, but a keystone in the architecture of a supercontinent. To imagine such a world is to step outside the human sense of time. Civilizations rise and fall in thousands of years. Empires last centuries. A single lifetime barely registers on geological scales. Yet Earth works on spans of tens of millions of years, its crust shifting in patterns as inevitable as the turning of seasons. The land beneath us, the maps we take for granted, are temporary arrangements. To the planet, they are as fleeting as clouds passing across the sky. But the march toward Amasia is not just a distant curiosity. It has consequences even in the present. For one, the northward drift of Australia continues to strain the fault zones across Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, ensuring that earthquakes, tsunamis, and eruptions will remain part of the region's reality. This is not speculation. It is an ongoing process. Entire cities, ports, and trade hubs exist in one of the most unstable geological regions in the world, a region under constant reshaping by Australia's push. The disasters of the past century, the tsunamis, the volcanic eruptions, the quakes, are but previews of what tectonics will continue to unleash. Even the simple fact of Australia's speed poses challenges. Its drift requires constant recalibration of global positioning systems. Without these corrections, digital navigation could fail catastrophically in a world ever more reliant on satellites and automation. It is a subtle reminder that while humans build their systems on the assumption of stability, the ground itself refuses to cooperate. The collision also carries with it a story of biology. For over 45 million years, Australia's isolation has been a crucible for evolution. Kangaroos, wallabies, wombats, koalas, echidnas, platypuses, these creatures, odd to outsiders yet emblematic of the continent, are products but that separation is temporary. When Australia fuses with Asia, barriers will fall. Asian species will pour southward. Australian species will push north. Some will thrive in their new habitats. Others will vanish. Just as the collision of North and South America millions of years ago triggered a mass interchange of animals, the so-called Great American Biotic Interchange, the fusion of Australia with Asia, will write a new evolutionary chapter. Imagine elephants or tigers, wandering landscapes once dominated by kangaroos. Imagine tropical forests creeping deeper into what is now the outback, bringing monkeys, hornbills, and crocodiles into territories where they have never existed. Imagine, too, the losses. Species that cannot adapt, unable to compete, fading into extinction. Australia's uniqueness will blur, replaced by a more cosmopolitan blend of life. It is both a promise and a tragedy, the kind of change that evolution demands, but which human imagination struggles to accept. The climate will not be spared either. As Australia slides closer to the equator, its dry heartlands could shift toward wetter, tropical climates. Rainforests may expand, rivers may surge, and once arid plains could bloom with new life. Yet at the same time, the closing of the Indonesian seas could choke off vital currents that stabilize climate across the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Monsoons may falter, droughts may deepen, storms may rage with new intensity. Entire agricultural systems, and the billions of people who rely on them, could face upheaval. What seems like the silent march of continents will ripple out into the daily lives of future societies. And this is perhaps the most sobering realization. The processes we treat as distant, slow, and almost abstract 
are in fact central to the human story. Earth's geology is not a backdrop. It is the stage itself, the shifting floorboards on which civilizations are built. Mountains rise and create rivers that feed fertile valleys. Earthquakes topple cities and reset histories. Climate patterns sculpt where people can farm, where they can live, where they must migrate. The drift of Australia northward is part of this vast web of cause and effect, a planetary script written long before humans arrived, but which continues to dictate the possibilities of our future. Look again at Australia's present-day frontier with Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, and you see a glimpse of this script in action. There, entire mountain ranges are being pushed skyward. Villages cling to ridges that did not exist a few million years ago, and seas are being compressed out of existence. Each tremor, each eruption, is a punctuation mark in a story that is far from finished. And what of humanity's place in this? It is easy to think of our cities, our technology, our global reach as transcending geology. But the truth is humbling. We are tenants on a restless planet. The skyscrapers of Darwin, the megacities of Jakarta, the towns scattered across Papua New Guinea, each exists at the mercy of tectonic shifts that can erase them in an instant. Even with our satellites, our early warning systems, our engineering, we remain fragile. To live on Earth is to live on a world in motion. If you've enjoyed diving into the incredible journey of Australia's northward drift and the breathtaking transformations it will unleash, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It's the best way to support this channel and ensure we can keep bringing you the hidden stories of our dynamic planet.